everybody. Welcome to a, another edition of Fast Tracks. I'm going to turn this damn thing off. Fast Tracks Wednesday. My name is Paul Abernathy. If you're not familiar with who I am or if you've never been to, the, to any of my streams, thanks for joining me, taking the time out of your day uh, to join me. And if you're a Fast Track student out there, hey, I'd expected you to be here. Bring in your questions on any of the units that you're working in. We'll go look it up. Um, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Again, I'm going to remind everybody that these sessions are for the Fast Track students. We let other people join in and it live streams so other people can kind of participate. But this is all about you, Fast Track students, people who are part of our program and uh, use our courses. And uh, uh, that's what we're here for. That's what we're trying to do. We're here to support you 100%. That's why we add all these other services, the chat, the message boards, the, the mobile apps, the, all this all for you, our student, okay? We just let the public join in, but it's all really about you students. So um, <clears throat> a couple things we'll talk about before we'll, we'll get into kind of a part two lesson here. We're talking about neutral calculations for these uh, one family dwellings. And of course, uh, next week we'll move into something probably in the multifamily. Um, unless y'all have recommendations on a certain lesson y'all want, we'll do that. But again, and the only people that can actually make a request for a Wednesday night lesson is a fast track student. Sorry, if you're not a fast track student, what are you waiting for? All right. All right, let's go real quick to the chat so I can say what up to all my friends. I want to do that first, and then we'll talk a little bit about what we're going to cover tonight. So let's get into the chat. Whoa, look at that. Already started. Okay. So let's see, who all do we have in here? Uh, Rick, thank you. Glad you could make it, your first live session. Pre appreciate you. Uh, Adam, thank you. Michael, as always, The Rock. Schwartzy's always there, buddy. Always there. Kyle, thank you for joining. Uh, Adam, Ross, thank you. Okay. On vacation. Adam is on vacation. And still made it to class. Look at that. That's, that's, hey, I always said our Fast Tracks folks are the most dedicated ever, okay? All right, what else we got? Sean, what's up? Thanks for joining me. David P., thank you. Ivan, um, uh, I'm a student. When is the open question time? Man, Ivan's already ready to, okay, remember, Ivan, it's about your unit, okay? If anybody has questions, that I'm not prepared, I don't have a slide for whatever, you missed the boat. You gotta send it in within 24 hours. But if you wanna go look at one of the unit questions that to look up, then we can most certainly do that, okay? So just remember the rules because I can't be bombarded and I've got lessons I have to teach, okay? So let's see here. So <clears throat> I, Ivan, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, you can think of your question and type it in and be ready. Uh, and what unit you're working on, uh, let's see. Uh, people who escaped the matrix, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, Dustin, there you go. Dustin Swartz is in the house. Matt, finally off work in time. Thanks, Matt, for joining me. Russ and Peggy, is Peggy with you or is this just you, Russ? Or maybe this is Peggy and Russ is not with us. I don't know. Richard, welcome, Richard. Van Man, uh, I'm, Van's not in the program, but currently studying for my California German. I watch your videos. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for joining. Red Dog. Good evening, everyone. Watching from California. We have a lot of viewers from California. I ain't lying. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you. California is not my favorite state. Okay. It's way out there in the West. And sometimes y'all think a little funny. But I still love you. You're in my fast tracks or you're my students or you're my friends. You're my family. So I like you. But I could have family live in California, and I still wouldn't be too fond of California. I'm just, it's just me, okay? I know there's a lot of pride, but I don't, I don't know. I'm just not. Y'all might not like Texas, okay? Um, I like Virginia best, but I'm not in Virginia, unfortunately. Oh, uh, what do we got? Russ and, yeah. So is it Russ or is it Peggy? And then we got Dustin. Thank, good evening, Dustin. Thanks for joining. All right, we got a, a full house here. For those that are in the background that are too shy to speak up, Thanks for joining me and uh, joining us here on a Wednesday night, Fast Tracks Live. So let me explain a little bit how Fast Tracks Live works so that Ivan can get his, there you go, Russ, thank you, sir. So, so Ivan can get his questions in there. 
If you're a student in the Fast Tracks program and you're going through the unit and you're struggling even after I share, now here's the thing. If you're going through the unit and you're struggling and you haven't submitted it yet for me to review, then I would prefer you not ask the question because I don't want to spoil it for other people um, because you need to take a stab at it. You need to try it. Our, our program is not easy. I think anybody will tell you that goes through our program, they're not easy. They challenge you. It's not like any other program. Uh, the answers, the questions are not all just multiple choice. And you have to fill in the blank. And uh, sometimes, you know, I, you know, I will be honest with you. I marked a guy's question wrong the other day because I usually take a value either or and I marked him wrong. So now I know what Jesse used to say about me. Hey, Seraphim, thank you for uh, uh, liking the stream. I appreciate it, guys. Like the stream. Hopefully you like it. If you're not, I got my haters out there, so I'm sure they're all flooding in in the background just waiting to, 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 to jump on me. But um, yeah, we, uh, we definitely want to make sure that if you're going through the unit and you don't understand something, uh, at least uh, either contact me about the unit material or if you have a question. But when it comes to the common things, Dustin, I appreciate you. When it comes to the um, uh, competency reviews, I'd really like you to try it before you reach out. It's okay to get it wrong, okay? Um, I get it. They're tough. They are not easy. Also, real quick, again, let me tell you all out there about the practice questions and all that, because I had people have been asking me, where are they at? Where are they at? We all know they're in your console at the very bottom. Okay, at the very bottom, and in that collection of questions, there are about eight that are not the greatest questions in a row. But you gotta remember, there's over 800. But there's about eight. I cannot do anything about those. We actually purchased that module for you from a, a database that is, be honest with you, a lot of the way those questions are written appear like that on a lot of exams. So I don't want to recreate the wheel. A question's a question. It's not a big deal because they're just questions on the code. So I am, they won't let me edit those. They won't let me fix those. I've identified to them and let them know, let the author know of those question database, and they just will not let me edit them. So use them as little Easter eggs. And if you find it, you know, I've had somebody just recently send me like three of them. I don't know who it was. I think... I, I can't remember the name, sent me three of them. I'm like, you found three of them and they're usually right in the same unit or right around it. So think of it as a you know, badge of honor if you can find them. Uh, sadly, the ones, the questions that really matter are the competency reviews, folks. They're the ones that matter. Also, just so you know, those that are in the 2020 and the 2023, because the 2023 is out, um, those, uh, uh, there's an additional database of questions. I don't know if y'all seen that yet, but there's another seven or 800 questions that we just recently added to your database. Um, instructions are in there and how to do it. Um, but if you're in the 2017, it's not going to work. Okay. Not going to work because we didn't buy that. We didn't uh, buy into that program. We only did 2020 and 2023. So sorry, you still get 800 some questions. You still get a lot of stuff. Uh, but you don't get the uh, you don't get the database for the 2020 and 2023. Sorry, um, and those were extra anyway. I just added them. They weren't really included in anything. I just wanted to add them for everybody because we're always trying to add more stuff. Okay, all right, makes sense. All right, we got that that part of the way. Um, now I will go on and open it up uh, because I do have a lesson and it shouldn't take that long. We're just going to do the neutral calculation for the work we did last week. But don't worry, because you won't remember all we did last week. I went out and I went on and filled out the sheet so we can look at that sheet like you guys should be filling out every time you do a calculation. We have a sheet that you just do it step by step just to get your, your get, get you in the mojo, get you understanding how the steps by numbers uh, gives you the code reference. It just makes it better. And for those that aren't familiar with these forms, I'll show what that looks like because I filled one out and and it's all ready, okay? What's up, Joel? Thanks for coming. Uh, it has been a while. Glad you could join us again, okay? Every now and then, I get old and I get stale and people get out of flavor with me, but then they always come back around, okay? And uh, appreciate you coming, okay?
Okay. There is Jesse. Jesse, you missed it. I told you I graded somebody's work the other day and there was a question which had two options and I must have been drinking heavily and I marked him wrong. And I thought of you, Jesse, the moment that I did that, when I didn't like the answer and I marked the guy's question wrong, and it didn't make a difference because he still got like a 92 anyway. But I was thinking when I did that, I thought my mind went straight to Jesse out of over 5,000 students. I'm sitting there going, what would Jesse say? OK, that's, that's what I was thinking. OK. All right. I will tell you all. Those that are familiar, I do miss the Wednesday night Zoom. I'm just saying. So some point that could come back because um, we did lose one of the board of directors and another one's going to come in. And there was only one vote shy of, bring, of being able to do the Wednesday night Zooms instead of these lives. But folks like these lives, right? So I don't know. I don't want to do both. I'm sorry. I'm too old. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I, Ivan says, what's your drink of choice as a Texan? <laughs> well, I like to think I'm a Virginian. I just kind of relocated to Texas, but uh, you'll be moving there next year. Awesome. If you're moving anywhere near McKinney, Texas, holler at me. I'll take you on a private tour of, of Uncle Wire's uh, campus. It's a kind of a treat for anybody to see it because it's, it's like the Disneyland of wire and cable. I mean, everything uh, you wouldn't believe the size of our complex. It's, it's larger than any wiring cable complex, I can promise you, uh, in the country, all on one, one, one site. Not little satellites. I mean, as far as the whole company be on one property, okay? I can take you to where we smelt the copper, the cathode, all the way to the end of the line and everything. And, of course, my tours are like nobody else's tours because I take you places most people can't go. Just saying. Uh, anyway... Let's see here. Let's see. My, so, oh, for my, my drink of flavor, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't drink uh, mixed drinks. I don't drink liquor, bourbon, and all that stuff. I am a, are you ready? Already? I'm a Michelob Ultra guy. And I was boycotting Anheuser-Busch, but I was like, damn it, I got no constitution because I love Michelob Ultra. So I broke it and I drink Michelob Ultra. Don't drink a lot, but I drink a little bit. David, welcome to the stream. CMECP in the house. Thank you, sir. Thanks for joining us. Okay. All right, Ivan, shoot. Go ahead. What's your question? Go on in now. Uh, what unit you want? Anybody out there, if you have a unit you want to go to, uh, let me know whether it's 2020 or 2017 or 2023, and I have to shift around a little bit to find it. Um, but let me know what unit you're at, what question you're at, and we will go and we will try to answer it if you have any that you don't understand. But I'm going to caution you. If you haven't submitted it, no, I don't do Bud Light. Sorry. Yeah, totally boycott that. But anyway, so, <laughs> but I think you know that. All right. So just let me know what unit you want to go to, what question. If not, we'll go into the night's unit. And I won't keep you all long tonight. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll still be an hour like I'm supposed to be. Oh, by the way, last week, y'all want to know what happened? Um, I have a UPS, and we lost power, but we had issues with the internet earlier, and I had not turned the UPS on. I had unplugged it, and I had everything going plate just to a strip. And so what happens is it shut down, and, and when we lost power, we lost power, okay? And all I had was one little strip plugged in, and it had battery power, and I could at least chat but everything else freaking shut down. Total, total rookie mistake, okay? Mm. I know, if you look in social media, everybody will say Paul thinks he's perfect. Reality is, y'all know better, and I ain't perfect. I know the code, but everything else, mm -mm. I can't even figure out how to use CapCut or whatever it is on TikTok, ready? And I am, you know, anyway, uh, let's see. Ivan says, I'm glad you don't do Bud Light. I like you even more. <laughs> yeah, never, never going to be Bud Light. And even more so recently. IPA. <sighs> you know, I don't like those beers I have to chew. You know what I'm saying? Those dark beers and all that. If I have to, if I feel like I got to chew it, then I'm, I'm not interested in it. Yeah, that type of thing. All right. 
But if you come down to Texas and you come near me, I got some great bars. We'll hit the bars, okay? And uh, I'll have a beer or two, okay? All right. Can't handle my liquor, so that wouldn't be that wouldn't be good for me. All right. Oh, I didn't say Sean. Welcome to the stream in Mero Miro. I know I'm not saying that right, but thank you for coming to the stream as well. All right, let's get into this. Anybody got any questions? Go ahead and post them in the chat or whatever unit you're on, and I'll go look. If not, I'll just go right into because I have gone on and filled out the forms so that we can kind of pick up where we were last week so it's a little more organized maybe and we can move right into it and i really the key for tonight the key for tonight is that i have a lot of people that still that are preparing for exams get confused for the neutral and it is really simple but people do get confused you know and if i said it was really simple on tiktok somebody would say i was being condescending and y'all know me better than that Everybody knows me better than that. Even if you follow me recently on TikTok when I've kind of gone whack jobby, everybody knows I'm different than that and I will help anybody learn anything, okay? I just have small amounts of time to give so my responses are usually short because I'm, you know what I mean? I'm all over the place, so much going on, but I want to try to answer everybody. So I do my best, okay? Oh, I say, I mean, I have a question on a different unit. But I hold them and email them. Uh, no, we can go to a different unit. Ivan, don't, 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 don't. This is your time, my friend. This is your time. Um, um, we'll go there. I can always go back. You know what? Everybody knows, Ivan, that I have ADD anyway, attention deficit disorder. I've had it my whole life. I go here, go here. And you know what? Hey, everybody, here's the thing. This isn't for YouTube. This is just the medium that I deliver this. We decided to do this. Remember what I promised you all in the meetings, in the Zoom meetings? Remember, Michael, what I said? This is about you. I don't give a damn about the, the viewers on this channel or that channel or Facebook. or something. You know, I'm glad they come. I'm glad everybody comes. But this moment, this is for you guys. This is for the Fast Track students. Um, and if everybody, if everybody learns, that's just a bonus, right? But that's what it's really all about. Oscar, I didn't even see you in the room. What's the matter? Oh, there you are. I wondered where you were at. Okay. So, um, so again, don't take me wrong. I'm, this is for everybody. But, I, you know, the, it's really I wanted to make sure that you uh, fast tracks folks who were concerned, right, when we did the Wednesday nights and we were going to go to these lives, you were concerned that it wouldn't be still about for you guys and it is very much for you guys we're just opening it up so we can help everybody now from all these platforms can ask you know come in and join us oh i am doing well my friend uh glad you could join us emmanuel nope we hadn't even got started to need a lesson emmanuel so you're just in time to join us okay all right ivan uh, let me know where you want to go and we'll go look at the question. Are you in the 2020 or the 2017 or the 2023? Which one are you in? So I can get readjusted to where you're at. And then we'll answer your question. Anybody else want to key it in? Uh, in uh, oh, while Ivan or whoever's typing, let me explain. Let me tell you what I did recently. We did some podcasts. Cool. Okay. 2020. Sean's in 2020. Um, we did some podcasts recently, and I want to tell you what they were in case you haven't had a chance to go listen to them. Uh, episode 140 came out. It is starting a business and the risks associated with it. Was it a right time, and should you start a business? Um, and uh, I'm very candid in that podcast, by the way. Um, the next one was Nonmetallic Sheath Cable Facts. That's episode 141. Check that out. If you think you know everything about Nonmetallic Sheath Cable, you might learn a little something extra. Oh, it's worth it. You know, I like to think most of my podcasts are worth it. Um, some people may disagree, and that's okay. Um, number 142 was my favorite change in the 2023 National Electrical Code. What was your favorite change? Anybody have a favorite change? My favorite change actually was how they redid Article 220. That was my, that's really my favorite change. It's like back when they redid 310, I was like, damn, that's my favorite change. Well, reworking 220, that was my favorite change for 2023. So listen to that podcast. Of course, I blew it now, so why listen to the podcast? But it's a pretty good podcast. 
143 was on MC Cable. I had some questions and answering different things and throwing out some tidbits about Metal Clad Cable. Uh, 144, and I'm just throwing these out to you while I'm waiting for anybody to give a question. Um, number 144 was called Skin Effect and Motivation, how to motivate somebody to go to the next level, how to, so Skin Effect, we were talking about how current travels and everybody thinks about this Skin Effect and it plays absolutely no role in 60 hertz building wire applications that you and me deal with. Now, as the, as the frequency goes higher, then think of it as pressure putting, pushing the actual uh, current out to the perimeter and all that kind of good stuff. But 60 hertz, it's irrelevant. Um, don't even have to take it into consideration. But you start getting higher frequencies, then you got to worry about it. Uh, most electricians that do building wires are never going to worry about that. Um, <laughs> look at O. O is just playing right now. Okay, so um, let's see, 145. So this is an interesting one. Make sure you listen to it. Have you ever wondered how to size wireways? Um, so the podcast that I do on wireway sizing, the reason I did that in a podcast rather than a video um, is because I wanted to challenge myself to explain it in a way that you would understand it without having to visually see something. And I think I achieved that. Uh, so a gentleman, you know, I, I gave it to a gentleman tonight who was, was working on wireways and I sent him the podcast and I said, you know, listen to this and see if it helps you. And one of the things that always shocks people is that sizing a wireway is, is really the same as sizing a raceway. And a wireway is a raceway, but there's a different way that you do it. Okay. So at the end of the day, um, it's, it was a good podcast and I show you how to do it whether all the conductors are the same size or we have a bunch of different sizes. So make sure you check that podcast. Now, my podcasts are available on every podcast platform. All you do is go searching for Master The NEC Podcast. So whether it's Spotify, Spreaker, Deezer, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, it doesn't matter. Now, if you want to find them and make it easy for you, okay, Ivan, let me show you how to make it easy for you, my brother. All you got to do makes me think of a Hall Note song. All you got to do is stay a while. Sarah, Sarah. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Hall and Oates era guy. All right. So anyway, what you want to do is you want to go over to our website. Ivan, and you want to go to where it says mobile app and download the mobile app, put the mobile app on your phone. Okay. Once this mobile app is on your phone, you see, you got a lot of calculators, a lot of free stuff on here, folks. If you don't have this app and you're in the field, there's tons of calculators on here. Work smarter, not harder. I'm always saying. So anyway, you go down here and you click podcast. And what you'll get is you'll get all of my podcasts right here. Right. It looks like all of them, but that isn't all of them, is it? Oh, it's because I went too quick and, it, and they didn't load. There you go. Take it takes a second to load. But once you get them, then all you got to do is click on them. Right. And listen to them. But where else can you listen? Um, you can again, all your favorite listening platforms. OK, you can listen to them. And I'm, we're constantly adding more. There's tons of them in here, dude. I mean, I didn't realize that podcasting had consumed a lot of my life. Um, I'm looking at over 800 and some episodes. But anyway, you click it. It's Magic Johnson. Magic now, do you have to listen to a commercial? Yeah, you got to listen to a little commercial because a brother's got to make a dime. You know what I'm saying? A brother's got to make a dime. Just listen to the commercial and then get past it. And Okay. Um, and so that was 145. And then I did a special podcast. <clears throat> I did a special podcast called episode 146. And I did this one. And I did this podcast on home inspectors. That's a must listen to. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. 
Couldn't help it. All right. Eric. Welcome, Eric. I saw you there. What's up? Thanks for joining. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Jesse. I appreciate it. Sometimes my podcast, some, sometimes, you know, I do the mobile ones, which are pretty short. Me just talking as I go to work. I don't know if people enjoy those or not. Uh, nobody's ever said, Paul, shut up. Um, well, let me take that back. If you're on TikTok, all week people have been telling me to shut up. So, you know, maybe. Um, but uh, everywhere else, you know, different. So, um, yes, I make about 0. 0.002 cent for every commercial. So, <laughs> so eh, it ain't that much. But the, at the end of the day, I do appreciate everybody because... Um, no, David, we're not going to get into that disagreements and debates here. This is for the fast track students. More than happy to send me an email. This is this is a little different platform. I, I, I don't want it to take me away from the lesson. The students can post their 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 units and questions. And then we do we do a little lesson. So um, it's not like the old show where I just take anything on Wednesday night because I've only got a certain amount of time. and I want to make sure I answer the students stuff and then do my lesson. OK, so. We got a little time at the end when I go to the chat session, you know, key it up and get it ready. And then maybe I can uh, give you something. But I, I don't want to, you know, I open these up for everybody, but these are really for the students. So um, but anyway, that's what that is. So anybody got any questions from uh, uh, from their units to go over? Maybe you'll have plenty of time, David. We can catch it in the end here, one of your questions. Uh, if nobody's got any questions to go look up a unit. Ivan, you had one, but I didn't see you post it. So, uh, can you talk about the guy that tried to say that everything I teach is wrong? Uh, oh, you mean the home inspector? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You know. That is such a funny story, but I'm not going to hash that out here. You know, um, I stand by what I said. The guy's a tool and you're not an educator when all you're doing is pointing stuff out. Sorry. Sometimes people's feelings get hurt. Um, and if he doesn't like me or anybody doesn't like me, what have I always said, guys? Don't follow me. Don't subscribe to me. Don't listen to me. Ignore my content. But he just couldn't resist. But I had no hard feelings towards him. I wish him much success in his business and uh, let him do whatever he's doing. But you know what? Electricity is not his thing and you need to stay in your lane. That's all I got to say about that. And did I lower myself on TikTok? God, that should be a whole separate. Should that be a whole separate uh, episode of did I lower my brow? Did I drop myself? Shit, no, because y'all know me. I don't care what anybody thinks of me. I don't care if people buy my courses. If they don't want to buy my courses because I offend you, then don't buy my courses. Trust me, my company has many other ways of making money, from our PPM Butler programs to our website design to our books and to our... I'll be okay, folks. Uh, he thinks that he could hurt somebody like me. You can't hurt me. You can't hurt my feelings. I'm not... I'm not worried about books in bookstores and that type of thing. So publicity, negative or positive, I don't really give a damn. So I think that's the problem. You guys know me. Those people over there, TikTok, they don't know me. And they don't know that I don't care. So, all right, what do we got, Jesse? Don't give me that Debbie, Debbie Downer time. I'm not going to do it. We're moving past it. He's a, he's a wanker. All right, so does anybody have any uh, units to look at? Okay, Van Man says, thought you got the neutral from the uh, demand cow. All right, we're going to talk about that today, uh, Van. I don't know if you were here last week, but we actually did look calculations. I don't see anybody asking the questions in the unit, so I'm going to go into the lesson. Um, and, and Ivan, if you want to email me, I'm please, you'll all know you can email me. Just go to paulabernathy.com and do it using the online portal. It's the easiest way to send me anything is through that portal. Trust me, it's just so much easier for you to just go on it and do it. You don't have to use your email. You just, boom, done. Um, okay, so last week, we did two calculations, okay? And we're going to go on and look at the, uh, the lesson real quick. So I know this might be hard to see. Uh, when I blow it up, I kind of lose stuff, but I'm going to do it for a second. Uh, just so people can see what we're talking about. So I'm going to try to blow it a little bit right here. Okay, so 
Uh, let's see here. I right, said so these were the loads, folks. Okay, Ivan. Well, definitely send me an email. I'll definitely converse, and you'll put your phone number in there, and I'll even call you and talk about it. I, that's what other people don't realize. I am approachable. I will call you, have a conversation with you. I want to make sure that that you're clear on something. That's kind of what's different than 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 me and other people. Um, and people can say what they want, but we're here to learn. So definitely, you know how to get me, get me and I'll help you. So these were what we talked about last week, right? We had the floor area, 2,500 square foot. We had a range that was 12 kW. We had a water heater that was 4 kW. We had a dishwasher that 1.5 kW. And trust me, folks, if you can't remember last week, it's okay. I'm going to kind of, y'all know me and Michael will tell you, I am redundant as hell. I go over things multiple times. So you'll see what we're talking about, okay? Um, so we have a dishwasher, 1.5, um, an in-sink waste disposer. We have a third horsepower. We have a clothes dryer, which is 4KW. We have electric heat, two banks, so it's 6KW total for the heat. And then the air, air handler that blows around all that heat is a quarter horsepower. And then we had an air conditioner compressor, which was five horsepower. And then we had a condensing fan, which was one sixth horsepower. Okay. So that's the loads that we had last week. And if you missed last week, it is available to rewatch it. Uh, so I don't want to rehash that again. It's the importance of coming each week is you get to continue on. And we have some great things planned in the, in the future. Uh, so we want to make sure that you don't miss one because some of them are going to daisy chain into other stuff. Okay. Um, and so we're also going to be even taking lessons out of the program and so that I can give more insight on certain lessons as well. So yeah, that's coming up as well. So, um, all right. So those are our loads. So we did some calculations. Now let's talk a little bit about of these loads. Since we have to use a standard method in order to do a neutral calculation. And the reason for that is why? Because 220.61 resides in part three. And of course, part four will reference us back to using the, for the neutral part three, okay? So absolutely, Van Man. So we have to do a calculation in order to determine what the neutral, but we also have to remember that the neutral itself cannot be smaller than the value given in 250.102c1 table. So that's our start. We can't be less than that, okay? But we also got to remember that our neutral has to handle the load, okay? So that's in two important factors to remember. We can't be less than what's in 250.102c1, but we can't, we have to at least be able to handle the maximum unbalanced load. And that's what we're going to calculate and try to determine what our neutral load is uh, tonight. OK, uh, like I said, I've worked it out so that we can kind of look at the numbers ahead of time and, and really know where we were last week to this week. That makes it a little easier for us. But what I wanted to look at to, when people ask about neutral calcs, look at this list here. So the floor area, which is we remember from last week, it was three VA per square foot. That floor area is very much part of neutral loads. Those small appliances that are 120 or 115, those are very much a part of our neutral calculation. Okay? So we have to remember that. Um, when it comes to the heat, don't worry about it. When it comes to the air conditioning, well, the air handler we have to worry about because that's 115. The air conditioner compressor, we ain't got to worry about. That's 230, okay? Remember, when it comes to the neutral, we're not doing this co non-coincident load garbage, okay? We're just taking the neutral. If it's got a neutral contribution, we're taking it. Next one is the condenser fan, all right? The one at the bottom there. It's a 115, so it definitely is a contribution. So the easiest way to remember how we do all this, if you remember last week, is we're going to do the first three steps the exact same way we did it for the standard calculation. Remember, 
We're going to take the 2,500 times three, and that's going to give us what? Okay, anybody remember? Well, I don't know if I should say remember. I guess that's basically, do you know how to do math? So that's 7,500. So 2,500 times three, 7,500. Now, what else did we have? There you go, Schwartzy. So we have what? A minimum of two small appliance brand circuits. So if you're on an exam, right? And bravo, thank you, Eric. If you're on an exam, then you know that if they ask you for a load calculation for the dwelling, right? Then you have to assume the minimum required circuits. So 210.11C1 and C2 are going to say, look, you're going to have to have a little, at least two small appliance brand circuits, right? And then it's going to say you have to have at least one laundry brand circuit. So where do we get the VA for those? 220.52. You're going to go there and look at those. And you have 220.52A and then you have B. And that's going to tell you I'm looking at this sheet y'all are looking at here. It's going to tell you at that point that it's 1500 each, right? Makes sense? Okay, so we'll jump to our form because I want you to see that even with the neutral, the beginning part starts exactly the same way, exactly the same. And that's important for me to make sure y'all understand that this doesn't, for most people, they, they get worried about the stress, but it starts exactly the same way. So let's go let's see if this will work for me. All right, so here's our neutral calculation right here. We're using the standard method. There's our 2,500. There's the 7,500. There's the minimum of two small appliance brand circuits right here, right there. There's the 3,000. There's the one laundry circuit, 1,500. Add that all up, that's 12,000. Now, for those that are new, or those that are joining us on the other platforms that are in the program, this, this form, you might not, if you've never seen this form before. This is a form that's in our program. And it's numbered and it gives code references because we're doing two things. We're still trying to do a calc, but we're also still trying to hammer these code references in your head, uh, especially if you're exam prepping it and you really want to start hammering these things. Um, home, you'll, you'll start to remember little nuances, and that's why they're on here, okay? So that's 1,200. Now, we totally get to apply 220.42, which is demand factors. Remember, we got to apply that for the ungrounded conductors when we were sizing using the standard method? Well, guess what? We get to apply that same thing. I mean, if it's good for the hot conductors, why shouldn't it be good for the neutral conductor, right? So again, the first part of your calculation is so easy when it comes to the neutral sizing because you're going to do everything you did when you did the standard method, okay? Now, for those out there that say, I never want to learn the standard method because you'll never use it in the field, um, then how would you ever do the neutral calculation? But I think most people just realize that, for example, if you buy SE cable, that the neutral is typically can't be more than two sizes smaller, right? So if it was a four-aught aluminum, that, that, that helical wrap around it, it's got to be equivalent to at least two-aught. I don't know if you knew that or not, but that's part of the UL standard, UL 854, if you're using like SEU cable and things like that. So, um, and then anything else, typically the neutral is either equal to the size of the ungrounded conductors, but it is permitted to be, to be less. Okay. But here, we don't have to worry about it because we're going to calculate it. All right, so it's 1,200. Now, we get to apply 220.42 just like we did last week. So it's 12,000. We're going to take 3,000 away from that because, remember, the first 3,000 is 100%. We get to keep all of that three. Set that aside. Then you've got 9,000 remainder. Well, the 9,000 is part of the next 301, uh, 3,001 all the way up to 120,000, or like we like to say, the next 117,000. Well, that 9,000 is nowhere near exceeding 117, so we only have to go to the next level, which is 35%. Now, if it had been a situation where it was over 120,000 of remaining load, then we would have to go, that remainder would be at 25%. But for most residential applications, I don't think it will ever, ever get to that point. And I've done some really large homes back when I 
uh, started winding down my contracting business, all I did was big homes because that's where the money was. I got, I wasn't, um, I wasn't as hungry. In other words, I wasn't out there trying to make it uh, on, and, on volume. I just wanted to make it on the big stuff. Uh, I wanted to do one big house for $40,000 rather than a bunch of smaller ones for $12,000. You know what I'm saying? That was just my mentality. But I never had a house that would have been over the $120,000 uh, for that, you know, for that. So, you know, not going to be a big deal. All right. So anyway, so what we've got is the first 3,000, take it away. We got nine. We do nine times 35%. That's 3,150. And of course, what do we got to do with that three that we set aside? We got to add it back. Doesn't this all sound familiar? This is exactly what we did last week for the normal standard method. You get to apply the same demand factors, okay? All right, so that means our total here is 61.50, okay, right here. All right now, now we have to start paying attention to our neutral loads, okay? So the next thing we had as our neutral loads is we, all we had was, we'll go back and look. All we had was, let's see here, it looks like we had the in-sync waste disposer, okay? And Michael, again, if you can, you or one of you out there, go to uh, 430.248 and tell me what these uh, uh, VA, uh, the, the amps are for each one of these motors and uh, that we're going to be working. You see them on the screen. Somebody do that for me. Saves me time. Where do you find that, folks? If you have horsepower on a motor, then you're going to go to 430.248 for single phase, 430.250 for three phase. You're going to pick the voltage and you got the horsepower on the left. Then you're going to come down and that's going to give you the FLC. That's full load current. That's what we need in order to be able to take that and then multiply that by the voltage. And that's going to give us the VA so we can work these equations, right? Now, the easy one is the dishwasher. That one's 1.5, so we don't have to do squat, right? That's just 1500 VA. So that one's easy. Uh, and let's see. So that's the one. We don't have to worry about the water heater, right? Because that's 240 volt load. It's a neutral we're working with. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, and see, so of the appliances, it looks like the only thing we have is the dishwasher and the disposer. And Michael says the disposer is 7.2. So I'm going to take 7.2, clear all this stuff out, 7.2, and I'm going to multiply that by 115, and that is 828, okay? So that is our VA for that in-sync waste disposer. Like I always tell people, if at any point you're confused, do not let anybody intimidate you to come forward and say, I'm confused. This is a family event here, guys. This, I want to make sure that we're all 100% clear. Nobody ever in any of my classes will belittle anybody or I'll just kick them out of the room. Okay? We're here to learn. Okay? So the only reason is this is folks that are watching. This is what we do in closed sessions when we used to have Zoom. All we've done now is open it up so you can see. That's all. This is how we approach learning the code. So um, except for a Wednesday night, sometimes we went what? What, Eric? What, what do we go? One, sometimes we go what? Three and four hours on a Wednesday night. Okay? O liked those sessions, man. He's out in California. They're like, dude, I'm still up. Man, it's still dinner time. All right, but uh, here it would be what midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock. Uh, hey, if I felt you needed to learn, I was going to hang out with you. Okay, that's uh, just how I roll. So four hours easily, dude. I know we've done tons of four hour ones. Okay, so all right, so where we're at. So we know it was eight twenty eight. So let's go to our form. So here's our form, and what we've got here, if I can get my mouse over here, I don't know what the hell's going on with that. All right, so there, there's our 1500 for our dishwasher. And there's our 828 for our disposer. Okay, so the next question that people ask me, what if I had four or more appliances that were 120 volt or 115 volt loads? Would I still be able to apply the 75%? Absolutely. Remember, if it's good for the hot conductors, why can't it be good for the neutral? That's the way I want you to start thinking about it to this point. If it's good for the hot, and that's going to reduce what the hot sees because of those demands, then it's equally as good for the neutral. Why can't the neutral see the same? Uh, why can't it get the same demands, right? Now, in our case, 
We didn't have but two. So we have to just take the load as is. Okay, that's, that's all we can do is take the load. So never trust my math because you know what? Sometimes I get to drinking fruit punch and I've got diabetes, so I don't worry about uh, getting drunk, but my blood sugar get me high and I get all loopy if I get high. You don't want to go out to a party with me and spike my punch with a little sugar. Dude, I get crazy. Okay, I go wild. Uh, I might need a diaper or something afterwards, but I'll go wild. All right, so let's see. So 1,500 plus 828. All right, 2,328. Okay. Oh, you can't see that crap. 2,328. All right, so that's what we have right here. 2,328. So far, we're rocking and rolling. This is easy stuff now, man, right? I know if you're out there going, ball, I didn't need this. I already knew how to do a neutral. Well, Ask questions, uh, you know, uh, if, you, if you have any questions on this, on this stuff, just ask. All right, so the next step is let's tackle that clothes dryer. So let's go back to the clothes dryer and we'll remember. So let's look at this uh, clothes dryer here. So this clothes dryer is 4KW. What did we say in 220.54, if we're doing the standard method, if you got your code book, look at 220.54, what did we say? It says that the clothes dryer has to be 5KW or 5000 VA or the nameplate, whichever is greater. Well, in our case, it's only four, right? So we have to use five, right? And that's what we did when we did the standard method. But now we're doing the, the neutral. So we're going to take that four and we're going to ignore it and we're going to make it a five. But now, now with that said, what are we doing? We are now doing the neutral. So that's going to take us to the NEC. So I'm going to take us real quick so we can see what we're going to do with that 5,000 KW, I mean 5,000 watts or that 5 KW or that 5,000 VA. What do we do with it when it comes to the neutral? I'm sure my students know this already. Uh, and, you know, because I only have the, the best students in the world. Okay, and here we go. Let's go over to the NEC. And we're going to be here since we're doing a service calculation. We're going to be under 220.61. All right. So to size this neutral, it says on the screen, and I don't know, hopefully you all can read it. I can try to get a little bit bigger. That makes it a little bit better for you folks that are visually challenged like myself. Uh, it says... The feeder or service load uh, shall be the maximum unbalanced of the loads determined by this article. Okay, this article being 220, uh, by the way. It says the maximum unbalanced load shall be the maximum net calculated load, which is what we're trying to do right now, between the neutral conductor and any one ungrounded conductor. Okay. So neat thing about neutrals, folks. Um, neat, neat thing. If I have 10 amps, no, I like bigger numbers. I'm going bigger numbers. If I have 50 amps on leg A and 50 amps on leg B, and it was all balanced out like that, then the neutral would have zero, right? If I have 50 amps on leg A, zero on leg B, then the maximum imbalance on the neutral would be 50 amps, right? Um, so when we're doing a calculation, like what we're doing, we're having to come up with, and we're going to calculate this maximum unbalanced load. That, that's what we're doing is whole process to do that. Okay. Make sense. Uh, two, two has a neutral too. No, is it just split into one twenty? No. So that's interesting. So in a, since I'm going to bring context kind of Ivan to that question, Ranges and dryers. So when you think of 240 coming into your house, right? Phase to phase or leg to leg. I don't like calling phases because I, I think that's more of a transformer winding issue. Um, so I say line to line, or L1 to L2 be 240. L1 to the neutral is 120. It's basically a winding that's split midpoint on a winding in the transformer. And so it's 240 from, from point to point, 
and from point to midpoint, it's 120. Now, when we run it to dryers and ranges, we're really doing 240, but we need a neutral because sometimes, for example, with dryers, you'll have one component that runs the drum and you'll have one component that runs the heat. And in some of the newer stuff, you have electronics. So they need the 120, so they'll need that neutral in order to be able to run the electronics while the 240 takes care of the big loads. You get me? So that's why we're required to run four conductors to a range and four conductors to a, um, um, a, a, dish, a, um, a dryer, right? Now, if I have an air, uh, an air handler unit, Ivan, that's only 240 volts, then I could run something like an SEU to that. Now, that's usually, you know, say copper, because if it's aluminum, a lot of times they won't let you take aluminum into it. So you put the disconnect right beside it and then you change it over to copper. But that's for a whole nother topic. But I could run two hot conductors and an, uh, an equipment ground because I don't need a neutral. Right. So I might run an SEU, U style, to that unit because I just need the two hots and then the helical wrap that's around it that you wrap off of it and you twist together to make a conductor, that's actually my equipment ground, right? Uh, or I could run a non-metallic sheath cable up there, let's say, as long as I understand the 60 degree column and ampacities, but let's say I run an NMB up there. Um, then I only need two hots and an equipment ground, so I wouldn't need a neutral. But in dryers and ranges, you most certainly need to have four conductors. I need your two hots, your 240, and then I need that neutral, okay? And then I need an equipment ground, okay? Ivan, I'll, I'll, let me know if that made sense to you. Um, so I wanna make sure it does. Great question. I love the questions like that. The, that are that's, That is so germane to the topic. So that's why I like questions that are germane to it. Okay, so this is what we're working with. Now, here is our permitted reductions. So we know that that, that dryer is 5,000 uh, VA. Well, it says right here, a service or feeder supplying the following loads shall be permitted. So this is permissive. Means if you don't want to take it at, at, a, at a reduction, you can take it at the full value if you want. I mean, if you want to size your neutral the same size as all of your ungrounded conductors, then have at it. You perfectly can do that. But when it comes to an exam, you want the best possible answer. And the best possible answer is they're gonna assume that you use all of the uh, permissive allowances that are available here, okay? All right, so in this case right here, here's what it says. It says, a service or feeder supplying the following load shall be permitted to have an additional, okay? An additional demand factor of 70% applied to the amount in 220.61B1 or the portion of the amount in 220.61B2. Now, B2 is when you have over 200 amps of unbalanced load and you get to do some little extra. So um, you take the, uh, the first 200 at 100% and everything over that, I'm able to apply 70% to it. That's not gonna be for us today because we're not gonna have near that amount of neutral current, okay? All right, so we already know that we get to take a 70%. But what do we get to apply, take the 70% from? Right here. For a feeder and service supplying household electric ranges, wall-mounted ovens, counter-mounted cooking units, and electric dryers, which is you know, kind of what we're working on here. Uh, it says where the maximum unbalanced load, and we calculated that out, okay, uh, has been determined in accordance with table 220.55 for ranges, or table 220.54 for dryers. All right, well, for us, we know that the, there's only one dryer, and if you go to that table, it says take it a one to four is 100%. So we're gonna just simply take that four KW, we now make it a five KW, you remember? And then we take that five KW and we multiply that by 70% because we're getting able to take that demand. So I'm gonna do 5,000 times 0.70 and that is 3,500. So basically that 70% demand that we can have, okay? All right, so let's go back to, let's see if we can get back to the lesson real quick. Well, not so much the lesson, let's go back here. All right, so here you go, we're back to filling out our form. 
If you don't have these forms, guys, and you're not using them, use them. Laminate them. Use a dry eraser on it. Keep them in your book, okay? Use them in the field. Maybe you're having a morning meeting where you're, you're training other guys or something, and you pull this form out and say, guys, let's go over a little example. Let's, let's write on a piece of paper. I do this stuff to people all the time when I used to go to meetings. I'd write down a fictitious dwelling or something, and I would say, all right, guys, let's solve this in a little you know, 15, 20 minute, 30 minute lesson, that type of thing. Always challenge yourself. Change the variables up a little bit, all right? And if at any point you get confused and you're working on them yourself, reach out to me. Just make sure you share me everything because I hate coming in the middle of stuff and I don't know all the variables. Share it all with me and I'll help you, all right? All right, so where are we at? So here you go. So there's that 35. Now, what about that range? So we already wrote down the dryer. We're good. <coughs> Let's go back to the lesson. And y'all remember what we did last week? So this is a range and it's 12 kW, right? <coughs> I'm all choked up about it because I love 12 kW ranges for some reason. All right. So since it's not exceeding 12 and it's certainly not eight and three quarters or less, it's going to be in column C. And notice that in 250, uh, 220.55, that when you have one range, the demand value is 8,000. You don't use the 12, you use the 8,000, okay? So if I need to go show that, I'll go show that, but that's pretty much common sense for us that have been working in this. Now, if anybody wants me to show that, where that is in the range table, please let me know. I'm more than happy to go there, okay? I'm really ha more than happy to do it. Hey, I've got it. Key I've got the code keyed up. I can go anywhere you want me to go with that. All right. So, but since it says only one range in 220.55, okay, Van, let's look at it. Let's look at uh, let's look at uh, Van's question here. Van says I'm confused on when to use the 70 or the 83. Okay, ignore the 83 right now. We use the 83 percent when we sized the ungrounded hot conductors. So the easiest thing to remember is for right now, don't 83%, get that out of your mind. Get it out, right? We're working 70% right now of the dryer's value and of the range values. So, yep, get rid of that 83 in your mind right now. That is, a, that is the 310.12, 83% rule, and that was for sizing ungrounded, the hot conductors. Now, it gives you a permission there for the grounded conductor to be smaller, but you could size it the same size as the 83% if you want it, right? But we're trying to size it 100% accurate. And it may even be smaller than what it would be with the 83%. We don't know yet, okay? So we wanna work it out. But right now, just get that 83. Let's just focus on the, uh, um, let's focus on the 70%, which is part of the neutral calculation and then we'll, we'll tie some things together. Uh, I, I like how your mind is clicking though. So keep thinking about it, but let's focus 70. Um, Rem, these forms are only available to our fast track students. Um, so if you're fast track students, you should see a download in your, in your program for these and it's in the course material. Uh, they're not available to anybody outside of the program. Okay, all right, so Although people can make their own, you know, these are pretty simple to make, but the, the, these are, per, these are for only for our students. Um, here's a hint, though. If you go online and Google, there's tons of these sheets online that people have made and uploaded, different ones like this. Maybe not like these, but very similar, and it probably doesn't have all the code references, but there, there are a lot of them available out there. All right, and, uh, and you could probably connect with one of our students, and they'd probably share it. I just can't share it. All right, so where was I at? Oh, so somebody wants me to show it. Okay, let's, let's, let's do that a little real quick for the dryer. Oh, by the way, I have some very extensive dryer videos over on Fast Tracks Tube. If you're a Fast Tracks student and you're not a member of Fast Tracks Tube, um, there's a lot of extra videos out there, but it's only for the Fast Tracks Plus members, right? That time. Or you could screenshot it. Then I'm gonna move it real quick, Eric, so nobody can screenshot it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start jiggling around so that it moves. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you could screenshot it and recreate this is easy. 
Uh, a lot of people do these in an Excel file too. Um, all right. God, I got ADD. I go all over the place. You know? All right. So let's do this here. Let's, let's go to the code real quick. And let's see. So I can show y'all where we got the eight. All right. So we're over here. And. All right. Uh, but hold on for. Yeah. You, you still have to add the 25% for the largest motor, even in the 2017. Um, that's just for non-coincident loads. It gets a little iffy, but you're still going to need 220.50 applies whether it's the 2020 or the 2017. So you'll still need to do the largest motor. Um, and if the largest, you have to accommodate the largest motor for the neutralist too. So let's, let, we'll cover that. Okay. You don't get to hide from that one. All right. So 220.55. Here we are. And here's what it says, folks. It says the load for household ranges, wall-mounted ovens, counter-mounted cooking, and other household cooking appliances individually rated in excess of one and three quarter kW shall be permitted to calculate in accordance with table 220.55. So that's where we get the permission. So we're going to use this table. Okay. Now here's the table. So we have one appliance right here. Okay. One appliance. Right. And I'm pretty sure if I share this screen, you won't be able to see any of it. Yeah, it's very, very little. So let me do it this way. We have one appliance right here. OK, and with that one appliance. You go over to the right, you're going to be under column C. Notice it says not over 12. OK, not over 12. And we aren't. Ours is 12. Now, you're always going to use C, okay, in all cases. You're always going to use column C unless, unless, and I, God, I hate how this will not let me, the only way I can do this, guys, is to shrink it out. And this is going to suck for y'all to be able to see it. But this is the only way I can get majority of this thing in here is to do this. And I'm sorry. Um, but let me prove a point here. So here it says use column C in all cases except otherwise permitted in note three. Well, note three is if you happen to have cooking appliances that fall under this less than three and a half, but again, more than one and three quarter, or if they fall between three and a half and eight and three quarter, if they fall in there, then you get to use those columns. And we're not going to go into that because that's a whole different lesson on ranges. I've got videos on ranges. Maybe we'll do ranges again one night, but right now we're focusing on what we're doing and we have one range and it was 12 kW. And so it's not over 12. So we're in C. We don't have to use any of the notes because it's over 12. So here it is right there. See that eight? You probably can't see that eight. So I don't think this lets me zoom this. So let me go in here real quick. Uh, did I realize how, how I had to struggle with this tonight? All right, so there we go. Right there, okay? There's the eight. So that's where we get the eight. Okay. Now here's another little thing. All of these columns in B and A, that's percentage. Column C is actual KW. Don't ever let that get you confused. Column C is actual KW. Okay. So remember, you remember that. So this is where we get the eight right from that table to uh, 220.55. Okay. Makes sense. All right. So let me bring back up our sheet really quickly. And uh, so we're doing the neutral still here. And so there you go. So 8,000 is our, our uh, value for the range. Now, remember what it said in 220.61? It says that we can apply 70% to that, just like we did the dryer. Sweet. So we got 8,000 times 70%. That's 5,600 VA. That is the neutral contribution for our calculation. So that's why we fill that in right here. There's the 56 right there. Okay. All right. See how simple this is getting? So the next one we've got is that air conditioning and heating. Now, here's what's beautiful thing about the neutral. Okay. The beautiful thing about the neutral is all we're looking for is all of the, the loads that would be 120 or 115 volt loads. Right. That's all we're looking for. So if we go back to the lesson, we don't have to care about this. Uh, oops. 
We don't have to care about this heat because that's 240. Eh, we don't care about that. No neutral load associated with that. Look at Michael doing all the math. All right. And we go down here and uh, we look at, of course, we don't need all that for the neutral, Michael, right? Uh, so we go down here and we look at the condensing fan. So we need that and we need the air handler. And that's it. So the quarter horsepower, Michael said, was 667. Ah, that's what Michael did. He's just doing all the math for me, okay? Although we did need to use the uh, five horsepower because, again, that's 230 volts. We're doing neutrals, right? We don't have to compare heat and AC here. We're just taking the loads that are neutral loads. So we've got the 667 for that uh, quarter horsepower air handler, which is 115 volts, so that's a neutral load. And then we've got the condensing fan that is one sixth horsepower. And Michael says that that is 506. So it's 667 plus 506. 1173. How simple is that? We don't, there's no comparison. We don't have to go heat versus AC. This is purely the neutral. We can forget all that crap that we did last week when it comes to that, right? So if you go back to the lesson, Here, right here, we're going to add it right here. Here's where we add the 1173, okay? Look at the king is in the house, okay? The king is in the house. If y'all are on TikTok, follow the TikTok king. He loves that little platform. I get in trouble on that platform. He does a good job on that platform. I get banned from it, or I get people calling me uh, uh, whatever they call me. <laughs> All right, so next, what's the last one, guys? We've done everything, right? We, we got all of our neutral loads. We, we, we acted very similar to the standard method. We followed everything. The last thing, now, this is where we were talking about, Richard. So we still have to capture because we have to comply with the 220.50. And remember, if we used it for the, un, for the ungrounded, then we, get to, uh, we have to account for it because it is... Uh, when it's running and it's the largest motor that has a neutral contribution, we want to make sure that we capture that neutral current in that largest motor, right? Um, so the largest motor we got here is going to be that, I believe it's going to be the in-sync waste disposer that Michael has shared up there on the screen. So I think that it's going to be, I'll, I'll mention that again, uh, uh, King, Michael is sharing it on the screen, okay? Michael is sharing. Michael helping me out. Did I mention that? Did I? Did I? Okay. All right. So, um, <laughs> so 828 is our VA for our largest neutral contributed motor. Is that even a word contributed? I made that up. That's my own word. Um, for here on out, anybody that ever uses it, I get a quarter. So somebody keep track. All right, so what we're doing is we take that and all we're trying to do is capture 25%. That's it, okay? That 1173, that was, uh, that was the um, air handler blower motor and the condensing fan motor. So maybe, hey, maybe I should do this. I know Michael did it, but Sean, I don't know if you can see Michael's comment but we have to use the motor tables to calculate and, and solve what the actual VA is. Does anybody want me to show that? I'm more than happy to show that, to do it, the steps to do that, because that's all we did. If I go back to the lesson, uh, Sean, what it is, is we, we have the only neutral loads that we have for the air conditioning, right, is this, that one right there, Right? That's the air handler. It's a 115. And then we have this one, the condensing fan. That's a 115. So those are our only air conditioning or even heating loads. We really don't have any heating except for the air handler does blow heat around. So, but they are neutral loads. They are neutral loads. So how did we get the values that Michael shared with us? Okay, let's, let's go on and go to the code book. And I'll show you. I love it. Dude, I, I can work code every day, okay? Sometimes, again, Jesse's going to jump on me. But over TikTok, they make me sound like a grump, like I'm the grumpy Sparky. Um, but I love code, and, and I, I will go anywhere we want to go to work it. 
And I eat and sleep this crap. So, you know, I don't know if needs to feel sorry for me. You know, it's just, this is just my life. I, I just can't help it. Um, and I already forgot where the hell I was going. Oh, 4.30. Okay. And uh, so we're going to go to 4.30 and we're going to go to... And, and can y'all see me squinting? I can't see squat. I am about blind. Diabetes has done a number on me. One day y'all are going to see a notice... When y'all try to come to class and y'all are not going to find me anywhere and somebody's going to say, look at Jesse, hits the points. Uh, somebody's going to come to me and say, where's Paul? And Paul's no longer here. All right, so here we go. So we're going to be here in 430.248, okay? So what we're looking for is that first one. So Michael, there was a, a quarter horsepower, y'all remember? The first one was an air handler. So it's a quarter horsepower. So we come down here. This is where we want to be. Single phase, alternating current. This is a column we want to be in. Oh, and by the way, if your question on your exam says 120 volts, you use 120 ultimately in your calculation that we're going to do in a minute. If it says 115, you use 115, right? Yes, my podcast will live on forever unless somebody doesn't pay the server and they end up just going to crap. Okay. Well, I, you know what? I guess that's not true. I guess when they're up on Apple and all that, they stay forever. Okay. Yeah, they'll always be there. All right. Cool. All right. So, and there's 800 of them, folks. So go back and listen to some of the early ones. So, I mean, challenge y'all to go back and see if you can find the very first podcast I ever uploaded on those platforms years ago. Hmm. All right. So I probably sounded better then than I do now, you know. Um, let's see. All right. So 115, right? And what I was saying is, even if your motor is a 120 and it gives you the horsepower, you're still going to go to this same table and you're still going to use the 115, right? Because the 115 is going to be what's utilized for 120 applications, okay? So right here, we're looking for, what is that? Quarter horsepower? All right, y'all going to go here. There's a quarter. And it looks like it is, oh, wait a minute. When, Michael, was Michael sharing us some bad numbers earlier? Maybe he wasn't. Maybe it was just me. Probably me. So here it is. It is 5.8. Probably me, Michael. All right, so we have 5.8. So now we come back to the lesson. This is the first one. And that was 5.8. And it was, and that's what the uh, amps are. And then we multiply that by 115. So I multiply that by 115. No, Michael got us. He was right. So it's a 667, okay? So uh, hopefully you're tracking. Uh, who is that? Sean, hopefully you're tracking with me. Give me a thumbs up. You're tracking. So you write that 661 down, right? All right, so now we're going to go back to the, to the uh, code. And the next one was the 1 -sixth horsepower. So we go down here to the 1 -sixth horsepower right here. And that one is 4.4 amps. So remember, this is where you go. And it's important, folks, for you to get used to these tables. Because when you're working in 430, you're doing the short circuit ground fault protection. You're doing conductor sizing. You're doing all of that good stuff. Okay? When you're doing all that, then you want to make sure that you know that this is where you get the amps to start. Okay? Right here. So that's going to be very important for you to learn these tables in 430. So anyway. So... That is 4.4. So let's come back to our, let's see, where are we at? Let's come back to our math here. So 4.4 times, and what was our lesson? Still 115 volts. And that is 506. So um, who was it? It's Sean. So what it is, is all we did was add 667 and 506 together. And that's where we came up with the 1100. And 73, I think. Right? So right there. So that, oops, sorry, folks. The mouse is all over the freaking place. All right, so that's how we came up with that number. So hopefully we're all square on that, okay? All right. So remember, now we had to find the next largest motor, and I will definitely get your question, Rim. Hold on there a second. Um, so the next... One was that largest motor. We have still have to appease 220.50. So what was the largest motor? Well, 
It was the 828 for that in sync waste disposer, which was one third horsepower. Okay, that type of thing. All right, so we take that 828. Remember how we did that? That was, I think that's where Michael got. That's the 7.2 from 430.248. And we did that times 115. And that's how we got 828. So that is the largest neutral contribution motor, right? So we do 828 times 25%, because all we're trying to do is get that 25%. That's it. We already got it 100 into the equation. We're just trying to capture that 25%. All right. So. 828, I know I got it on the screen, but I'm gonna do it again. I like to test myself, make sure I'm right. That's 207, so that's all we're trying to capture, that 207, so you write that down, okay? So you add all this up, and I want y'all to do the math for me, because I don't trust my math. Again, I might have been high on diabetes medicine. So it looks like we're gonna be 6150, we're gonna be 2328, we're going to be 3,500. We're going to be 5,600. We're going to be 1,173. We're going to be 207. And that is 18,958. And that's exactly what we have. Okay? Now, we're going to do it just like we did anything else. We're going to take that number and we're going to divide it by our system voltage. That's phase to phase. Okay? Because these, these neutral loads are going to be distributed across both phases. So I take the 18,958, divide it by 240, and that's going to give me 78.99. And again, 220.5 says we can round anything 0.5 or greater when it's dealing with amps. Then we're going to round this up to 79, right? 79. Now, once we know this load, 79, we need to determine what size conductor do we need to have for this? Now, I'm going to tell you about my equation here uh, for the real world. It's going to be, in most exams, it's going to be like a THHN. So we're going to be under 75 degree column because the terminals are going to be 75. The insulation is going to be 75. Um, and most of, of this type of stuff you're using with service stuff, and I happen to know because I work for a wire and cable person uh, or company, um, it's going to be probably going to be at least 75, probably 90 degree rated. Okay. So just be very conscious of that. But where do we go first? So first thing, before I go look at 310.16, and then we start comparing it to 310.12 to answer some of the questions earlier, I need to go and see what the minimum size needs to be, right, under 250.102C1. So let's all take a journey with me, and you will see... It, how we get there, All right? So I'm going to go back to the NEC, and I just want to compare it. Can't be less than size, so we just need to know what that minimum size has to be here. So I'm going to go into 250, and I'm going to go to 102 C, and I'll remind you these lights in here do not help. Me being able to see, I can promise you that. All right, so here's the table. Uh, okay, this shows up on the screen, so we're, we're good so far. All right, so in our case, we have to remember what was the size of the conductor. Oh, I guess we got to do that first. Hold on, I'll take you to that. This, 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 let me make sure that's up here real quick. So when we're sizing the neutral, we have to use the size of the ungrounded conductors that we did in our previous calculation. So I'll, I'll take you to that because I, I think that's important. We'll take you to it. Obviously, we need to know. So in our situation, I've done all of these for us. Right here was our standard calculation that we did last week. I just translated it in here. And it resulted, and we used 310.12. And we decided using the 80, here you go now. Here's where the 83 came in. We size it, and it, didn't ha it could be a one-gauge copper. That's the size. So now we're going to go to 250.102C1. Now, if you're lost here, this is what we did last week. Make sure you go back and watch that. And I promise you, Rem, I'm going to answer your question. But you've got to go back and watch that. I don't want to rehash that again. Okay? I have also, only so much time. I don't want to redo that. So it's one copper, right? So now we're going to go 
to the NEC. And I can get my mouse to work. So we're one copper right here, right? And it determines what size we need to be. And it's either a six copper or four aluminum, okay? But that means it can't be less than that. Y'all with me? This is a minimum. Notice what it says up here, okay? It has to be. This is this this right here is talking about sizes, and this is saying, look, this is it can't be any smaller than this. Okay? All right. Just remember that number. Okay? It can't be smaller than a six based on this table. Bear with me. All right. Now what do you do? We we did a load calculation. So now we're going to take the number that we got, 79 amps, and now we're going to go to 31016 and see what the actual size would be. Okay. So let's go to 31016. Any of this doesn't make sense. You let me know. Okay. Because I do go quickly. I used to think I was a slow, and then people kept saying, Paul, slow down. None of you would say that. Jesse would say it. Schwartzy would say it. Most people don't say it. All right. So here we go. We're under the 75 degree column right here. And I need something that handles 79 amps. Well, remember when it says a six in 25102C1 is a can't be less than? Well, if I chose a six, then that would be only good for 65 amps. And we have a 75, a 79 amp calculation in balance load. So the next size up from the six is a four, and that is 85 amps, which can handle the 79, and that is not a problem. Now, we wouldn't want to use the values from 310.12 for the neutral, because that would make it be a one. I like the fact that I can get away with what? A four, and that is okay, right? So we go back to our sheet. I will redo any of that. Anybody's confusing. That's the kind of guy I am. I will review it. So we go back here. And so when you get here, getting down to the neutral, that is why it's a four copper for this 79 amps. Because there's no benefit to try to use 310.12 here for the neutral. It's not going to benefit you. I always want the best possible size. And that might mean the smallest conductor. I'm okay with it. That type of scenario. Okay. Now, in the real world, people probably don't do all, don't really get into all these maths. They just go, screw that, Paul. I'm just going to go full size neutrals for everything. And that's okay, too. That's in the field. That's not on an exam. On an exam, you want to solve it out like this. But in the field, you probably just, you know, neutral is probably close to full size or you buy SER or I mean, SEU and it's and it's already sized for you. You ain't got to do nothing. You buy four odd aluminum and you just do it. Hey, Mark Passwater, thank you for liking the stream. Uh, appreciate you. All right, so let me ask the question. Let me answer some questions here. Ram says, since the rain is 240 still, do we need to add the neutral to the calculation? Absolutely, Ram. Remember, you're running four conductors to the range. Two hots, you have a neutral and an equipment ground. Since you have a neutral and you're going to have neutral contribution, right? Um, hey, I think um, I think it's on the actual stream. There's a thing at the bottom, Eric, that, that has a button that says like. I think it's on your player, somewhere like a like button or a thumbs up or something like that. Here I am soliciting for likes. <gasps> Give me like. Um, I guess, you know, there's, I've only ever really get one thumbs down. It's the same guy that gives it to me every week. And you wonder why he still watches my stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you know, there you go AJ he's hit it he liked the stream all right so so yes rim since it's four conductors and a range and a dryer does need neutral connections so that it does have neutral loads so that's why we have to count the neutral for the ranges and dryers in our contribution absolutely hopefully that answers your question um are we not using the AC because it's 230 absolutely then it doesn't have any neutral load to it, right? It's just two hots and an equipment ground. It doesn't have it. it. We're only doing the neutral today. Last week, we did the ungrounded hots, and that's where we had to get into the AC and the heat. Here, we're only doing the neutral, and we're only taking neutral contributions, okay? Now, um, 
Go for the clicks, Paul. <laughs> That's right. I'm a sellout. I'm an internet whore. All right, so let me go back to the to the lesson, right? There's Jesse. He got me. So um, I'm all about the clicks today. So what I want to keep in mind is when you get something, if you were to get something like this on an exam, let me, since that's the example, let me go back to chatting real quick, kind of so I can get you back to chatting and relax a little bit here. Um, it doesn't jingle for me. Uh, I thought it jingled. I didn't see yours come on the screen, Eric. I, I didn't, did, it, did you just do it? Did it didn't jingle for you? Um, oh, Facebook? No, Facebook, I don't think jingles. Okay, I don't think we have Facebook hooked up on a jingle. But just be aware, folks, that when you're on an exam, they're going to give you the values. What I really want you to do is really slow down and concentrate on it, because if they give you other appliances that have neutral, then account for that neutral load, right? That type of thing. Uh, so, hey, well, Eric, it, it, maybe I have you on anti-jingle. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't even know how I turned all that stuff on, to be honest with you. I just, I just did it. All right. So, um, well, I know I had the jingle turned off for you, Swartzy. Come on now. All right. So I get, I, I would get tired of hearing it jingle all the time. So just be aware on an exam what they give you. My advice is don't forget that you still have to account for your minimum of two small appliances. Don't forget that you have to count for laundry. Yes, all of those are neutral loads, right? You're just running a circuit out, a black and a white. So they're obviously uh, going to you know, be neutral loads and everything, that type of thing, okay? So, um, but here we're doing a, a, a load calculation and we're just taking a collection of all the information and bringing it together and doing a load calculation. And remember, you have to use the standard method to do a neutral calculation. Unless you want to just say, screw it, and you do the standard method, and you, uh, um, let's say you do the standard method or even the optional method, and you use 310.12 to size your hots like we did last week, uh, and you want to make your neutral the full size, uh, the same size, then they, in the real world, that's fine. It's not going to work on an exam. You need to do it like I showed you today. All right? Now, let me remind everybody, if any of this is ever confusing to you, I apologize. That's not what I'm trying to convey. Um, I'm, you know, there's, like I always say, I'm, I'm not be the best educator in the world. I do the best I can to try to convey the message. I've helped many people, but I'm sure I can confuse as many people as well. So I do my best. Anybody out there that that's a better than me, there's, there's many other people that you can follow too and, and learn from them. I am an equal opportunity educator. Um, I don't have any problem with it, but I do appreciate you joining my course and buying my programs and helping support me. Uh, for what I do. So don't ever think as a, as a member, as a, uh, a, a customer, please, no matter what you might see me post or just goofing around, I never take for granted how much I appreciate you guys for believing in our program. We would not be here without you. So I do appreciate every one of you. Um, but um, so, so, so don't follow me on TikTok because I, I get kind of crazy there. I'm just saying <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, so, but, uh, well, we got some new people in here. But, uh, Yarel, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Glad you like it. Rim, I guess I caught everybody in here by the questions. So, um, if I don't have any, uh, if I don't have any others uh, in this lesson, or anybody's confused by anything I just did, I guess, David, if you're here, if you got a, I got a few more minutes. If you want to ask, if you have your question, I'm more than happy to try to give you my opinion on it. Um, and uh, more than happy to answer a question for you. All right. Look, awesome. Awesome's in the house. Thank you, sir. Uh, congratulations. I reached a hundred messages today. That's cool. Y'all are very engaging. I love it when people are engaged. Uh, where was last week's video? All of our videos are available over on the YouTube channel. Adrian, thank you for coming, Adrian. Uh, all, all available. Just go over there. You'll be able to see them. They're all listed over there until which time they get moved and then they'll be on fast tracks too. But currently, um, we're, we're working on a four week delay so while we're moving stuff over, you can go watch them on our YouTube channel. Okay, so 
Um, if you're here, just go to our um, previous videos, our collection, and you'll see it'll be titled Chapter 8 um, or Unit 8, and that's last week's video. Check that out. Okay, it should be up here. I will remind you it got cut off right at the end, but we, we had already pretty much hashed everything out before I uh, showed my amateur status on my streaming, right? You would think, as many videos as I've done for the last God knows when since 2004 that I would, you would think I'd have this stuff nailed down, but I can't control equipment. When equipment goes wrong, what can you do, right? All right, so David, if you don't have a question, I don't know if David's still in here or not, but I'm gonna cut y'all guys out unless anybody's got any other questions, ask me opinion, secret of life. You know what the secret of life is? The secret of life is learning how to wade through life's crap. That's the secret of life. Uh, Richard says, so you only do the 70% demand for ranges and dryers. Yeah, you only do the 70% demand for what it tells you you can in 220.61, right? So let's go back to that real quick, just so we, we, we know. When you're asking for that load calculation, so when we go back here and we're looking at Applying those demands, okay, find out where I'm at here. All right, so 220.61 right here, okay. When we're applying this 70% for this situation, for this load calc, right, then here's what it can apply to. It applies to household cooking range, electric ranges. It'll apply to wall-mounted ovens. There you go, that's a wall-mounted ovens. I mean, you got those house where you got the cooktop and your ovens in the wall, okay. It's kind of swanky. I don't have that. Uh, Counter-mounted cooking units. I'll be honest with you, I don't even have a cooktop. I got a regular old range. And my wife can't cook, so we eat out most of the time. I know, Paul, then you should cook. Paul can't cook either. So, you know what? I can eat. God knows I can eat, but I can't cook. Um, so, wall-mounted oven, counter-mounted cooking unit, electric dryers. So, that's your list, Richard. There's your list for when you're doing this load calculation to what you can apply. Now, if you do a load calculation and it's, and we'll do this when we do multifamily and when we do non, uh, when we do commercial, cause we are gonna cover that stuff uh, in these uh, Wednesday nights. Um, we just, I can't get it all. We gotta slow it and get to each thing. But when you have a calculation, you're able to apply a demand, whereas the value, if your unbalanced load exceeds 200, then you can apply a 70% to that amount that exceeds 200, right? Okay, so that's just an additional demand, right? And that can be taken on addition to this, okay? It used to be implied that that couldn't happen, but yeah, I mean, if you do your one count and you're doing your neutral, then I ought to be able to apply the demand again as well, okay? Size for equipment ground for the fun of it. Well, the equipment ground is, let's go back to our lesson. For those that we did, yeah, let's go on and do that. Absolutely for the fun of it. Let's do that. Keep me on my toes, bro. So let's go back here. And so we want to size the equipment ground. Well, to size that, we need to know what the size of the overcurrent protected device was. So it's assuming we, we obviously, let's say if we did the standard method and we determined that it was a, the load came out to be 145 amps, but that didn't correspond, so we ended up going to a what? A 150, right? Now you see the answer here, right? So 150, so where do we go to size what? Oh, excuse me, that's the grounding electroconductor. My bad. You want me to do equipment ground? Well, my bad. So we can't do an equipment ground. We don't have an equipment ground. But let's do one for craps and giggles. Let's say, that the emergency disconnect was outside and we know this load we did was for the outside unit and that's what this is. And now we're gonna run a feeder inside to the actual panel inside. And we still can use 310.12 because that panel inside is seeing 100% of the load. Okay, we can do that. So where do we go? Well, once we know that the breaker was 150, okay? And that's also gonna be what the rating would be on the feeder. All right, if we were doing the feeder, same way. So, where do we go? 250.122, let's do it. Let's go there. Where the hell is my thing? Okay. All right. Oh, you meant you wanted to do the, the, the grounding electroconductor? Yeah, we can do that too. I'm cool. I ain't got nowhere to be, bro. 
let's do this. All right, so we go to, if this was a feeder and we know we had the emergency disconnect outside and it was also the service disconnect and now it's a feeder running to the panel inside the house and that was a 150, just like we just did, we're getting hypothetical now, then how do I size that feeder's equipment grounding conductor? All right, well, we're gonna go to 250, 122, can even see the screen here, 250. So unprofessional. That's what they call me on TikTok, unprofessional. All right, so let's see, 250.122 right here. Jesse's gonna say, let it go, Paul, let it go. No, that's usually Mike that says that. All right, so let's go down here. And since we've got a 150, if over the 100, so because it's in that gap between the 100 and the 200, then you have to go with the 200. So the minimum size equipment ground in this case would be a six. So it would be a six for that feeder, okay? So that's what that would be for that. Okay, let's get back again to where we're at, to our, to our sheet in the size of that uh, grounding electroconductor. Because we want to we want to do that real quick. All right, so let's go to that. Okay, so the grounding electrode conductor is sized based on the determined size of our service conductors. And in this case, we sized it for one copper, right? Right? One copper. So we're going to go to the code. I'll definitely get your questions here, so let me get me here. So we go to the code, and we're going to go to 250.66, right? Because that's where we go for sizing grounding electrode conductors. All right, now, in our question, we did not say that it was a ground rod. We did not say it was a ground ring. We did not say it was a U for ground. We just said size the grounding electrode conductor. So here's a little tip, folks. If they just ask you to size the grounding electrode conductor, then all you do is you go to the table, okay? Now, if they happen to tell you it's a ground rod, a, gra a pipe or plate electrode, a ground ring, or even a U for ground, then guess what? You can sneak on down here to 250.66A and B and C. But if they don't mention any of these types of electrodes you see on the screen right there, then you want to always be back up here at this table. And if that's the case, since the cop, since the conductor was a one gauge, then that means our grounding electroconductor is a six. And that's how we would size the grounding electroconductor. So we'll come back to the, to the form. And there you go. That's why we get the six. Now, the beautiful thing about these forms, again, is it gives you a lot of info. Okay? A lot of stuff. Sizing neutral gives you a lot of stuff right here to help you along the way so again these are great to print out uh, and have on you so i let's see I, let's see what we've got here uh, when i took the test this question came up how many light poles do you need to install a contactor box this one tricked me and i'm not really sure if i got it right there's got to be more details than that i don't know that i can solve that i don't know how many light poles do you need to install a contactor box that sounds like a trade thing. And again, I'm a code guy, so if it's not in the NEC, I didn't do a whole lot of that applications as a contractor, so I probably can't answer that question. It sounds like that is a what's called a knowledge-based question. So, um, But if you email that question to me, I will guarantee you I will get the answer. Uh, even if I got to track down a contactor manufacturer, I will get the answer uh, for that. But I don't know that that's in the NEC, but I, I, would have to look, I would have to look for that and try to find it for you. So I, can't an, I wish I could answer that for you, but I, I really can't. That's an example of one on an exam to not let you get steamrolled. If you, it's a good point now. If you actually get that on an exam and you're like, oh my God, where's it at? And you start looking and I go to my phone, my, my thing and everything, and maybe look under 410 uh, and look under you know 410 and light poles. It might be under 410. I don't know. Michael, did you look under there? Anybody look under 410? Hell, I got a second. Let's go look real quick and see if there's anything under here. Because this might be just basic knowledge, and, and I don't have that basic knowledge. I know. Somebody will watch this and say, Paul, you're a hack. You should know that. Sorry. I don't know it. I literally don't know everything. 
Okay. Um, so, and y'all should, people should already know that by now. Um, I know what I know and that's all I know. And, uh, there's certain things that I don't want to know. Um, but anyway, so let's see here. There's lamp holders, auxiliary. Give me a second while I look <clears throat> and see what I can find. If you know it off the bat, you can help everybody out. That's fine. But I'm looking in here just to look. Might as well since I got a second. Light mounting. And not integral. Transformers, whatever. Track lighting. I don't see. Heavy duty track lighting, lamp holders. Okay. This is why I don't do this on Wednesday nights, folks, because I just I um, I'm an electrical consultant. So trust me, I spend a lot of time looking things up and finding answers. OK. Uh, I even says 15 amps or more. What's your code reference? Um, I mean, is that in the NEC or is that just your code knowledge because you have experience working with that? If that's in the NEC, I'd have to spend time looking for that. But that's an example of one that I would definitely uh, skip, you know, unless I knew exactly what it is or you want to spend the time looking for it. Okay. But do me a favor. Send me the question if you can remember how it's questions, how it's questioned. And I will look it up and see if I can't find the answer if it's in here. There's a lot of stuff in this code that I'd have to sit down, but that is most certainly one that I would skip. <laughs> unless you just happen to already know the answer to that. And I don't know the answer off the top of my head to that. I'd have to, I'd have to look at that thing up. But I can tell you my common sense would probably tell me that I can't have a circuit less than 15 amps anyway. So um, that's the minimum size branch circuit. So I probably would go with something like that. Okay. No. I'll look it up if you can send me the question. Um, so, but anyway, remember on an exam, you have multiple, pa let me get back to chat real quick. If you have multiple passes, uh, on an exam, then what you want to do is mark one like that and move on to the next one. You don't want to get, you don't want to dwell on it. I certainly wouldn't dwell on it. Um, that type of thing. Uh, but I can most certainly find you the answer and it just, uh, send it to me. Uh, Brian said, I passed my journeyman test with, you, with your help. Thank you very much, Brian. I'm glad. Congratulations uh, for, for getting past that journeyman's. Are you now moving towards the master's? Is that your goal? You know, put in the time and then do the master's. Uh, Yariel says, I feel like I can do this. Your class every Wednesday and the website, Fast Track System, in the website uh, to join like the course to pass the exam. So let me reread that again here. I feel like I can do this. Your class is every Wednesday, yes, unless I'm sick or something, something, something. And in is the website Fast Track System is the web, website I joined to, to get in our course. Yes, you do. Our, it's called FastTrackSystem.com, just like this right here. And that's where all my courses are. Absolutely. Oh, Jesse, Jesse, remind me when my first podcast, January 12th, 2014. Now, that wasn't my first podcast. That was the first one that I loaded when I came here to Texas because I've been in Texas since 2014. There's some old ones out there on the internet that go back earlier than that, but they weren't on any, because podcasts didn't exist back when I did it in 2004, okay? <laughs> they didn't exist. So Caesar, thanks for joining us, okay? Um, also remind you guys that there are a lot of blogs on our website. If you don't want to look at the ones about exam prep, because that's more me trying to sell courses. I, I'm a salesman, but I tell people I'm not a salesman. I'm trying to sell courses. I teach code, but that's, you know, this is how I, this is how I feed my family. So um, at the end of the day, we still give a lot of free stuff away. So go over to the blog. We got two free courses on our website. They're free. Try them out. Make sure you get the mobile app. It's free has a lot of resources in there and I'm constantly adding new stuff. Make sure you join uh, Schwartzy and, and me sometimes over on the Fast Tracks chat, okay? It's just FastTracksChat.com. Um, and make sure you also check out the Sparky Hub. Share it with people. Maybe you wanna get rid of all this other stuff, like, you know, maybe you don't like the TikTok drama or the Facebook drama, but you just wanna talk electrical code. Then go to the SparkyHub.com, right? 
in the dark web. Hey, <laughs> you know, Jesse, I probably got a lot of crap up in the dark web, okay? I probably got satellites linking up, watching the crap I do. Um, and guess what they put me on? I have to monitor my blood. Damn, during the day when I'm eating, this damn alarm goes off like crazy. You know, they should put a little auto alarm on there that says, stop it, fat boy. Stop it, fat boy. Then I would stop eating. Anyway. All right. That's it tonight. I really enjoyed all y'all tonight. This was fun. I love doing it. I, I do miss the Wednesday nights closed. But again, we have allowed people to come in. <clears throat> I'm essentially answering the same questions. Stop eating Wendy's. Where, how do you know that I eat Wendy's? Oh, that's right. I love me some Wendy's. Mmm. Hey, somebody out there said Chick-fil-A is bad for you. All right, Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A, don't sue me, okay? But somebody said Chick-fil-A is bad for you. I thought the chicken was good for you. Hmm. Mm. Anyway, uh, the app. Where can you go to the app? I will type it. I will type it in here. I don't know if it'll appear, but I'll tell you where you can go get it. If you don't want to get it off the website, you just go to NEC chat. Uh, dot com. The hell is the dot? All right, there you go. Um, NECchat.com. And anyway, I don't know if that works. Is that a comma or a period? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So it is a big gulp. But I will let you know that it was sugar free and it was zero calorie. Okay. So yeah, that type of thing. All right. Same time every week. Rem, Schwartzy, thank you. Uh, Eric, everybody. Jesse. Yarel, Yarel, I'm saying that wrong, probably. Um, Rick, awesome. Jesse, Ivan, uh, Brian, Rick. Uh, gosh, who else? All in here. Emmanuel, Kyle, Richard, most certainly Adrian, uh, Adam. Who else in here tonight? Eric, definitely jumping in with us. Uh, David, <clears throat> I think David took off, but he... Uh, Came in. The Basement King joined us for a while. Sean, thanks for jumping in tonight. Um, wow. A lot of good. Van Man, thank you for coming in, Van Man, tonight. Appreciate you coming in here uh, and joining us. O, most certainly. Thank you, O, for, for popping in, Eric. <laughs> uh, who else do we got here? I don't want to leave anybody out. Sarah Firm. Sarah Fem. Fem. I'm, I know I'm brutal butchering that, but thank you for joining me. Joel was in here. Hadn't been in here a while, but he's been with us. Oh, man. Oscar. Again, I got you, Oscar. And let's see here. Anybody else that I missed? Marimo, Mero, Mero. Thanks for joining. I know I probably butchered that. Jesse, Dustin. Dustin uh, graced us tonight. Russ and Peggy, but only Russ wanted to attend. Dustin joined us. Red Dog joined me tonight. I appreciate it. Matt Troy finally got off work and was able to tune in. Appreciate you. People who escaped the Matrix. Doodly doodly. Got in tonight. Appreciate it. David P. came in tonight. Wow. Uh, a lot of people came in tonight. I appreciate you all. I know you could go anywhere, uh, but I appreciate you coming. Hopefully I've made learning code a little bit more entertaining than just blah and boring. That's my goal. Kind of help you enjoy it and engage you to want to be a part of it. But the app is definitely awesome. Oh, and by the way, by the way, we do not use the Wix anymore. Nothing on Wix. This is all our own proprietary stuff. This is our own, okay? There's calculators in this thing. You can chat in here. It's also got another thing on here called Chat Now. That's pretty cool because you can chat now and you can't really see it, but there you go. Well, you kind of see it. it's a chat now. Nobody's using that, but I don't know why. Um, man, there's all kinds of, you can get YouTube, uh, Fast Tracks Tube in here. If you're a subscriber, then you can get that through here as well. If you like our Fast Tracks tube, that type of thing. Uh, what is that? Jesse says, bring back the web -aners. Oh, the webinars. Um, yeah, we had a webinar. We were going to do the webinar and nobody signed up for it. Okay. I'm not popular anymore. And I think what it is, is it was so buried deep on the website. Okay. So, uh, Rick, um, now these, the Fast Tracks course is an exam prep. It's, it's not a, I mean, you'll get a grade at the end. You'll know what your percentages are. 
Um, but it's not really a graded course. It's not going to give you any credit for anything. It's not going to be, it's not, you know, that. I mean, you get a grade, but I don't issue grades for this. It's, it's an exam prep. It doesn't qualify for anything. It's preparing you to get your license, and that to me is way more important. Uh, now, our other courses, like our residential, commercial, industrial, all those, uh, then once you complete that, you can get a certificate of completion, definitely. But we really don't do anything for this. Uh, but you should be able to monitor what your grade is. So this is why, oh, good questions, guys. So this is why when somebody submits a competency review, we only grade it one time, right? One. Uh, because if we give you the answers, right? If we give you the answers, then what happens is it taints the score because I've already given you the answers. So we only grade it one time, okay? So, um... That's all we'll do so we don't taint the score. Any other ones you submit, we're just going to give you a zero and tell you that we've already graded it. That's just, we, we only give you one grade. That's it. Now, you can do the practices and all that, and hopefully you all know about the extra database. Hopefully you all know that you have that extra database of questions that we've added. So you should have a ton of questions. So yes, Rick, the red course is. Now, we don't grade the red course at the same frequency as we do the fast tracks black and plus and all that because the residential commercial they're all learning courses so you um we grade those in books when students when there's a certain number of of ready to grade it sends me a notice and i grade but we don't do those you're supposed to just move on through that that's a learning course so don't worry as much about the scores as you just try to complete the course uh, and then we'll still give you feedback Absolutely. Okay. Um, but it gets kind of how that one works. Kind of a little weird, but that's how those courses work. They're triggered to send me a notice when a certain number of students are ready to be graded. That type of thing. Now, if you're a student in one of those, uh, the, the, uh, one of the reds or the greens or whatever, and you got some courses that, that need to be graded, you always can send me a notice and say, hey, Paul, do you mind grading this? And I'll jump out of the sequence and grade it for you. I don't have a problem at all. I want to grade everything. Okay, I love grading it. Um, but we generally only do it, unlike the Fast Tracks Black and Plus, because we have so many students. And it always puzzles me because we have, you know, we have like, we've had up to 30 some people in here. And that's the same way it was for the Wednesday night. But we literally have thousands of students. But what we found is that not everybody utilizes everything that we have. They don't need to come to the videos or they don't want the videos or, or whatnot. And that's OK. I'm OK with that. Uh, and then I have a lot of corporate students that are in a block because if you have a big company with 25 employees in it and you want them all to be on the same page, we create a special program for them uh, and uh, they could come if they want. I mean, might be somebody here lurking in the room, but they get their own special stuff. Right. So they're not in. That's part of a different block. That's not of our normal fast tracks, black or plus. That's a little different. Uh, that's through a corporate type, type of thing. OK. Hey, somebody asked me about it. Somebody asked me about that one time. Uh, but yeah, that's totally separate. They're not going to be mixed into the same mix with our normal fast tracks, black and plus type students. Something. So hopefully I answered that question. Yarl, so how much time you suggest studying every day? How long would you be in realistic time? To take the actual test okay good question you know um, we recommend 90 days is the proper time to prepare so the magic number to be successful on an exam that we found based on our research and other people can fluff crap we track all this y'all every time y'all do something in the program we track it we know when you're in there and when you're out we look at the times study times um, and we have our own data that says it takes between 95 to 100 hours of dedicated study to go into an exam and feeling just like, you know what, I'm going to nail this crap. There ain't nothing they can throw in front of me that's going to roadblock me. If I see a question I don't know, I'm prepared. I know to check it, move on. I feel comfortable. That type of scenario. So, um, it's basically 90 days. Can you do it quicker than that? Absolutely. But when we say 90 days, we mean that you're going to study two times a week for four hours each session. Now, if you say, well, I, I, I'd rather do it, study three times a week. Okay, so you just take the value, you know, that's eight hours. 
Divide it up by how many days you want to study. And if you want to study five days a week and you want to study, uh, you know, uh, you know, two hours, let's say each day or whatnot, that's up to you. That's fine. But, but, but the magic number is 95 to 100 hours of dedicated study. So we want to realize that life gets in the way, right? We can't all sit and study. Sometimes we got family, kids. God knows I had my troubles with my kid. So you, you, you not always can dedicate your time, right? So we're trying to make it palatable. And so in realistic terms, 90 days is the best way to approach it. Uh, we do have people that do it in, in 30 days. We have people that do it in 60 days. But the guys that do it in 30 days, they're literally studying every day. And there's sometimes I get worried about that because... Let me talk about competency reviews real quick for you folks, because it's really important. Competency reviews, if you're getting scores below 85, even though you're getting above, you're getting 70 above, and I'm going to give you the answers, don't be pleased with your scores in the 70s. Um, I want you in the 80s, 85s. I want you up there. And so what that means is if I give you the answers, I really want you to take the time, go back, Really dissect why you got it wrong. Spend some time in there. Don't be ready to just move. My concern with the people that do the 30 days and the 60 days, they're submitting review, 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 and they're going forward. I don't even have time to catch up and grade them. But then by the time I do grade them, some of their reports, some of their grades are 60s and some of them are low 70s. So this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. Take your time, be very diligent. And a lot of times people will say, I don't get this question on the competency. It's in the reading material. We're not going to give you the exam answer, but we're going to give you the method to find the answer, how to do it, okay? how to calculate it, that type of thing. All right? And then the last thing I'll tell you about this, and this is what I tell people all the time, you do not need to know everything in the National Ethical Code. That is why you have the book. I mean, I can tell you right now, I do not know everything in this book. Now, I can read it and interpret it and give an interpretation and explain just about anything in this book. But if you ask me to regurgitate it, some people say that's not true. I remember most of this stuff. But the reality is I am getting too damn old and I am a uh, consultant in too many of these. I got to go to New York next month to be in an expert witness case. I am not going to try to remember this stuff anymore. And if you're out in the field, you need to remember the, the, the common stuff that you're going to learn in our program. But the other stuff, you just need to know how to find it. And that's all. Now, for an exam, you need to know how to get past the exam, know how to maneuver the code book, know the three-wave method. Go watch my video on how to do the three waves. And then you're going to be okay, right? You're not going to have any problem uh, doing it. And if you do... Get off, you know, I know it's going to be disappointing if you fail, but get back on that horse. Don't let it beat you down. Don't, let, don't give in. Do not throw in the towel. Everybody learns differently. No matter how much I've done this for so many years, no matter how much I teach, some people absorb it differently. Some people have anxiety on exams. Some people just don't test well. And you no, know, a lot of people have reading comprehension I have reading comprehension. When I read something, even today, and, and I serve on various code panels, when I read something in the code, sometimes I have to stop and read it again because I want to make sure I'm like, okay, am I reading this right? Okay, now the stuff that I'm so familiar with, I can just blurt out. But if I get into the weeds, then sometimes I got to read it. Everybody's that way. Don't let anybody fool you. Anybody you see in videos and, and people that, that, that are, what do you call them, uh, electrical code, uh, you know, big wigs here, you know, I'm not going to, I'm going to remove myself from that air quote. Um, what you see on camera is not necessarily the whole story, okay? Everybody that's an NEC consultant that do this for a living, and I do this for a living, I usually have to go through and do a detailed analysis of, of a code issue. I know how to work this book. I know how to read it. I know how to find things, okay? I can't quote everything in here off my head. You know what I'm saying? But I can find the answer. And then we put it together and we submit it. That's what a code expert does. It doesn't mean that we know everything. That's such a misconception that I hear people all the time. They say, Paul, you think you know it all. 
I don't think anybody has ever heard me ever in my life say that. I learn something new every day. And if, if I didn't, then I'm ready to cash in because life in this world would be so freaking boring. I want to learn something. I still want to learn. I want to learn how many, what it needs for whatever that contactor question, whatever is. I want to know if it's in here because I don't know it off the top of my head. Uh, you know, so send me that question and uh, make sure you give me all the details and I will find you the answer and I'll share it with all you on Wednesday night. Okay. Oh, uh, what is Rick? What do you say here? Oh, let's uh, see here. Yariel. Yariel? I hope I'm saying that right. How much time you should study every day? Oh, I answered that one. Okay. Uh, and then you'll be ready. Put, give, give me 95 hours minimum of your dedicated study time. Give me 19 units in our program. And Swartzy, who tests all over the country, right? Swartzy's into these tests, right? Let Swartzy tell you. He's been in the fast tracks a long time. He's not, Swartzy's an honest guy. He's not going to just shill for me, right? We don't do that. That's only over in TikTok where people do that crap. Here, he's going to be honest with you. And he wouldn't still be in the program if he didn't find it beneficial. So again, put the time in. You're going to be okay, right? Most people put a lot more time than that. David's not here. David's in the CMECP program, which is our next level program. And uh, Dave put an enormous amount of time in there, right? And uh, he, he reaped the benefits of it, okay? Uh, Eric says they, they give you a year to take the exam. What if you don't pass that in that year? Um, well, I'm not sure what you mean by that because they can't block you all forever. You mean you're telling me that you're in a state where you get a year to take it and uh, you can only take it one time? Um, I guess you can have some states out there that are just pretty piss poor. I, I should say that, that they basically are basically just pounding their chest to make things difficult for somebody. I don't know how many times uh, you can take in whatever state you're in, Eric. I don't know how many times a year you can take it. California. OK, how many times do they let you take it in a year? How many times can you take your exam? It's a good question, Eric, because we got a lot of California guys in here. Um, most of my students don't have that much trouble with it, okay? There you go. Mike's been here a while. He learns something new every class. Appreciate you, Michael. Um, let me know, Eric, on that one, because, again, I'm not overly familiar with the, the time limits. I could look it up, but... You're in there, so let me know. Uh, Rick, what is the CMECP? The CMECP, that this right here, that's a Certified Master Electrical Co-Professional Program. So Master Electricians, once you get to a certain level, basically we wanted to create a next level challenge, right? A next level that you could take your knowledge to to become more proficient in NEC, being much better. Um, and so that's what the CMECP is all about. But you have to be a Master Electrician already to get into this program. Um, all right, Sean, what does it say? In California, if you fail, you have to wait six months before you take it. All right, so you get, so you get, good God, that's terrible. So you get two pops at it, basically, right? So let me ask you a question. So if you take it and you fail it, and you study for six more months, life sucks, but you, it happens. Nobody can guarantee you if you pass. But if you study right, you, you, you remember, I'm going to be honest with you. California is a closed book. Most of the people that tell me it ain't that hard because there's no way they expect you to remember this. So majority of the stuff in there is going to be out of uh, a, a common sense approach to things. Okay, They cannot expect you to remember that entire NEC. That's just not how it's going to work. So I've had a lot of people that freaked out about it. And then they ended up sending me and saying, yeah, it ended up not being as bad as I thought. But if you... Take it six months and you fail, you can take it again in six months. Are you saying that after a year, you can't never take it again? That's, I guess, what I'm asking, okay? I said, okay, Sean says, and if you fail it a third time, you have to wait a year after that. But you're getting three times at it. If you're going through our course and you're learning all this stuff and you're, and you're putting together all the information that they have on their, you know, whatever their study guide is, it's, it's got to be hard to fail, Right. If you're putting in this effort and you're in the program, I don't see how you could fail. If it's based on the National Electrical Code, you're going to learn so much in this course. I just don't see how it can fail, how you can fail. I, I don't. I don't have I don't have any students that, that fail. But, they, you know, but again, I don't see how if you put it in. 
Um, what did the phone here? We got, I got a question. It didn't seem like it shows up on the screen. I'm testing next month and I'll let you know. Study, 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 Eric. Make sure you know also um, what is... Uh... All right, Sean said I'm... Uh... I'm not seeing it on the screen, but Sean says actually my bad. Uh, it's after the second time you have to wait a year. Okay, so you get two, two, two shots at it. He's in Sacramento, okay? All right, so I mean, that's even more incentive to really buckle down and study. More incentive. If you're in the Fast Tracks Plus, you should be over there also watching the videos on Fast Tracks 2. I'm just saying. A lot of good videos over there. All right. Um, but again, we've got all the information you need. Now, I don't do OSHA yet. I don't do fire alarm. I don't do local amendments. I don't do uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, um, if it's an NEC-based exam, our course is going to cover it, right? Right. And these Wednesday nights that we're doing, stick with me. We're going to be doing some more stuff. Uh, we're going to do uh, wireway calculations. We're going to do a whole bunch of different stuff here on these Wednesday nights. So um, once we get past these load calc stuff too. Um, so I have faith in you, Eric. I think you'll be fine. Um, so the CMECP, Rick, just go to cmecp.org. O-R-G, C-M-E-C-P dot O-R-G, and you can read about that uh, and everything, okay? All right. And also, Eric, make sure, I don't know if you guys have seen them yet. Let me go real quick to the, to the lesson. I, I know y'all have, I mean, but here's where we're, we're at the unit. I want to make sure that y'all get this. Down here, right here, people ask me, here's the folder at the bottom, right, right here. Open it. Watch this video on how to do the root. And then down here is the bonus material. So here's all your questions, guys. Here's all the practice exams right here. Now, y'all all, all, all familiar with those. And here's your final exams, right? Here's your final exams right here, okay? Right down here in the bottom. Don't forget all this bonus material. Watch the video and then log in to the bonus material, okay? Yeah, I'm going to... Click save this resource right here. Okay, I'm gonna copy that. Copy, I'm gonna log in, and I'm gonna go to where I said, post it right here, paste, submit. And you have all of these resources right here too, guys. There's a bunch of quizzes. There's a crap load of these exams as well in three more finals. Dude, we have over, I believe now, over 2,000 questions. Only for you 2020. And only for you 2023 folks, okay? I'm just saying, okay? I'm only sharing the love for you folks, all right? Now, that's not actually true. That's only because we didn't buy the module for the 2017. <laughs> so anyway, all right. So that is all in here. And don't forget, there's blueprints in here that you can look at as well. Dude, I'm, I'm doing everything I can to try to help you be successful. If there's something that you feel that you lack, um, like if you're into, into motors, then, you know, make sure you go in and you, you watch the motor video. Here's our motor video right here. Even though this says single phase, it's still going to apply three phase. We talk about that. It's just I labeled it single phase. Make sure you watch the video. OK, um, we'll be updating these. But again, the general information didn't change. Same same concepts. No sense in reinventing the wheel. Everything's still applicable. Right. So, again, um, not sure what else there, okay. I've given you the tools. I'm here to answer your questions. I want you to learn. Again, um, I have taken a beating on TikTok the last week, you know? I've been told that I'm a teacher because I never did it. And I don't know how anybody could talk about this kind of stuff if you never got your hands dirty. I, I, I lived it. I crawled through the crawl spaces. Uh, I just found a passion for teaching. That's all. Um, and that's what I want to do. And that's what I want to do until I can't walk anymore. And if I can give you everything that I ever know or help you learn stuff that I don't know, that I do learn, that I can share with you, I'm going to try to do it. Isn't there supposed to be some music playing like, ooh, pause, ooh, 
I don't know. Anyway, I appreciate you folks. I'm going to let you go. We, we're, we went long tonight, but that's okay. And we didn't lose connection. So, hey, UPS, no storms in the area. We haven't gotten any rain in Texas for two weeks. All right. Everybody, I'm going to bolt out of here. I appreciate you all. God bless. Take care. And remember, you know how to reach me. You can post questions at the Sparky Hub. You can post questions on Fast Tracks Chat. You can email us questions. You go to paulabernathy.com. You can send it to us. Okay? You know? So, you know, I want to tell you all that I appreciate every one of you. I appreciate all the comments, too. Y'all take care. We will see you next week, and we will have a whole new lesson. I promise you. God bless everybody. Y'all take care.